What's going on guys, hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're gonna be installing the Model 3 Power Frunk Kit by Handshow. So just like my previous video for the power trunk, everything is all plug and play. It's quite easy to install. We got a weather seal now for the computer brain box that will go in the hood. All the appropriate wires that will attach into that computer box and also the wire actuator that will automate the frunk opening here. Overall, it's pretty easy to install. Everything is all plug and play. So let's take this step-by-step -step video and let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove the AC vent cover. Pull it up gently. Next thing is I'm gonna remove the pre-inlet filter. If you have one of these, remove this as well. And then I'm gonna be pointing to four little plastic bolts. You just pull up on this frame gently break free those pieces, put that to the side. And now I'm just locating all the 10 millimeter bolts you have to remove, there's three there. Remove the carpet from the frunk and there's two more down there in the base. I'm also removing this plastic cover where the button is and then disconnecting the wire, the emergency button wire and putting that piece to the side. And under that cover, there's two more bolts you have to remove for a total of seven bolts. Again, take your time doing this. I just broke free the tension, then I just unscrewed the rest of the bolts with my hands. It's pretty tricky getting those bolts out under the grocery hooks. Just take your time doing that. And there's one at the very top where the red wire is. Disconnect that final one. And there's again seven bolts. They're all exactly the same size. So don't worry about where they go when you have to replace this frunk bucket, if you will. Now I'm just gently pulling up on the buckets, releasing all the clips, the tension, taking your time doing this. careful about that wire we just disconnected you hear a bunch of clips breaking free and then once you have this out you can put this whole bucket to the side and now we can see all the guts and glory of the front of the model 3 wiring coolant you name it all kinds of stuff in there so first things first I'm gonna remove the spring and there's our wire we disconnected. My spring is way lighter because I installed this lighter spring, but yours, you might need a needle nose pliers to remove the original Tesla spring. And you can see there's two bolts. One I'm gonna unscrew, another 10 millimeter bolt. Removing that one on the right. And now we're gonna place our wire actuator, the handshow one, and affix our first part of the process. This little wire hook that will clip into place. So it goes through this hole here, going straight down and turning it to the right and reattaching that 10 millimeter bolt. So just placing that little hook straight down and turning to the right will lock it into place and then reaffixing the bolt. And now this also this hand show piece, little puzzle piece, put that little socket through that hole there and then affix it to that little slot in there. And now we've successfully added that little piece. And now we're attaching the hand show spring. This is a different spring now. You might need a needle nose pliers to attach this. Now we're going to remove our original Tesla struts. You're taking a flathead screwdriver, putting that over the top of the socket removing it on the top and also the bottom that latch will come free with the flathead screwdriver just taking your time doing it and now we're going to install our first hand show power strut just clips right into the socket start at the bottom then turn it and work your way to the top snaps right into place leave that wire to the side overhanging now we're going to install the left power strut same thing taking a flathead screwdriver taking it out of its socket. You might need a helping hand with this as the hood did come down on me, so. 
Remove that last strut. And now we'll reaffix our final power strut. Clips right into its socket. And I'm just taking a microfiber cloth to remove any excess lubrication. And now I'm just gonna place that wire underneath the plastic trim or frame of the car, making it look all neat. And then we're gonna place this wire over the top of the vehicle here and we'll reaffix this later. Now we're gonna unravel our first wiring harness. Untangle all this and every wire has a means. You can't screw it up but they all have different types of sockets and plugs. So the first plugs we're gonna move is the very top one here, the front of the vehicle. This is the original Tesla cord. Just unclip this cord. And you can see it looks just like the hand show plug. We're gonna attach it to that plug and then reaffix the other cord into the Tesla socket here. And that will clip right into place and reaffix that wire back into the foam and run the wire down neatly underneath. Now we're gonna attach our debugging plug to the original Tesla button that we removed from the panel. This is temporary guys, so it's very important that we remove this when we're done installing it. That's only temporary. And now we're gonna install the final plug here in the front of the vehicle. Pull up on that little clip and let the cord slide down from the socket. And then this will attach into the hand show plug. Clips right into place. And reattach the hand show plug into the Tesla socket. And now we'll tuck all of our wiring neatly under and unravel and organize our plugs. Now we're gonna attach our little buzzer or beeper. And that white plug will go into the computer box, the hand show one for later. And now we're gonna start connecting our wire to the 12 volt battery. So that's just a fuse the hand show plug as a fuse I'm just putting the weather seal over the top of it and we're gonna attach that fuse wire to the hand show plug clips right into place over that weather seal socket and now we're gonna loosen up our 12 volt battery plug loosen up that tension and then this will just slide right into its socket tighten it back up and then neatly place the wire over the top of the frame, reattaching that weather seal up to the battery. And now I'm loosening up a 10 millimeter socket on the frame of the vehicle for a ground plug. This will just slide into the ground plug of the vehicle. And that's our weather seal for the computer box. And we'll just start connecting everything all together now. Everything has its own plug, its own socket, and we're just gonna start attaching stuff to the computer box. Right now I'm doing the left power strut. It'll say on the box, the left power strut, and we'll now attach the right one. Another wire from the actuator plugs right back into the box Again, every socket has its own place we can't mi mix it up by putting one in the wrong socket and now we're gonna give power to the computer box you can see the green and red lights come on and one thing I want to point out here guys is you can see that little nub overhangs where the catch arm of the hood will go into so you might have to remove or not remove you might have to loosen up the nuts on that right there where I'm pointing to 
and pull back the tension of that wire. So you can see when I pull on that wire there, it releases or pulls on that little metal piece. You might have to bring it forward, you might have to bring it back because the hood latch must clear that hole. So I'm just going to re-tighten up these nuts again. Once you have that tightened up, you can see now there's a hole where the hood latch will go into, successfully go through the entire frame. And now I'm just putting that computer box in that little weather seal bag. It's gonna be a tight fit. Just take your time doing it. And then this gets zip tied right on top of the frame of the hood, cutting free the excess zip tie. And also I'm putting another zip tie down below to seal in the wires. And now I placed my buzzer right down below, this is a 3M adhesive below it. And also I put some electrical tape over half of the buzzer because I thought it was too loud. So I just covered up half of the hole to diminish the sound. And you can see there's our ground plug. And then there's the debugging plug. I now disconnected and you have to make sure you remove that debugging plug from the original Tesla cord. If you don't remove this, the frunk will auto open every 30 seconds. So this is only for the installation process. You make sure you remove that plug. And then that debugging plug will go under um, the frame of the Model 3 here. The frunk just tuck that down in there. You can see I put the actuator box zip tied to the back there. And then my emergency hood release latch I decided to put by the tire wheel well instead of the front of the vehicle where the bumper hole is. I just thought it'd be easier to access the hood this way so now I can reach my arm in there and pull up on that loop and release the hood if I need to as an emergency. Now I'm just putting the bucket back into place. And before you put the bucket back into place guys, make sure that wire is through the front of the hood there. We don't want to get trapped in there. And also it wouldn't hurt to test the hood first to make sure it closes successfully before you put the hood back into place. I know I did this a couple times, but once you put the bucket back into place with those weather seals, it may change the way the hood closes. You might have to readjust, which you'll see here in a moment, the front mechanism. You can see there's two bolts there. I'm going to loosen those two because I found out it did not close again. See it goes up and down. You might have to raise it up or bring it down. I found that this being all the way up for me worked best. And then I had to actually loosen up the nuts again so the actuator could go through the entire hole from the hood. Just pulling up on that wire. and re-tightening up the nuts. And you can see I push on the button on the hood and you can see the latch will go through the hole and then successfully lock the hood like so. And you can see the, the debugging plug there guys, that's not the right plug. This is the mistake I made. Make sure you use the original Tesla plug and then put that clamp back over the top along with your AC unit plastic pieces and then of course the main cover and then that should do the successful completion of this installation and now you can see I push on the button there it auto closes pretty well lined up with the frame of the vehicle do a little test there and also when I'm inside the cabin I hit the open button and it auto opens up as well so I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to comment down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you wouldn't mind hitting that like button and subscribing for future content. Appreciate it guys. Have a good one.